the last video, we looked at how to use the multiplayer synchronizer tool to synchronize player rotation and animation given the player's inputs. But what if you don't need to synchronize all those properties to all the players that are connected? For example, if you have a big open world, maybe an MMO or something, where something's happening over here, the players on the opposite side of the map don't really need to sync those or have those properties sync to them because it's not related. They're not gonna be affected. They're not gonna interact with those things. So we wait until we get near those objects or those actions in the game to begin seeking those properties. So there's something called a visibility tool that we can use with the multiplayer synchronizer. And I'm gonna show you how to use that today. Before we start, let's just take a quick look at the multiplayer synchronizer docs. You can see here that the visibility can be adjusted with this set visibility for or add visibility filter APIs. If we click on one of them, you can see there's quite a few methods to adjust the visibility properties for your synchronizer. I'm not going to really deep dive on these and I recommend experimenting on your own. But for today, we're just going to look at the set visibility for method and we're going to look at how to use that to toggle the visibility for the multiplayer synchronizer properties. For this demo, I'm going to have the player spawn a little sidekick animal that just sits there and waits for the other players to get near it. And when it does, it'll just slowly move towards it. Nothing will happen. It's just for illustration purposes and how the visibility works. So let's just see how to do that. So first thing I want to do is create a new scene to handle this little sidekick animal. So under scenes, I'm just gonna create a new folder. And I'm gonna call it items. And we're just gonna add over this model. And I wanna create a new scene for it. So let's also create a new scene. I'm probably gonna remove this, it's just there for now. And let's create a new scene. And we're, we're gonna use a area 3D for this one. And we'll just name it llama. Cause I'm gonna use a llama. Okay, so let's open up our scene. So we have a llama scene. I'm going to drag this up there. And look at that. There's our llama. OK. Oh, wow, so beautiful. So I'm going to do a couple quick setup things. I'm going to pull out this armature and animation player into the base of the llama object and just delete this. And I'm not actually going to use the animation player in this one or the armature or show anything. It's just uh, but you can use it if you if you know if you want. But I'm going to skip that for this video. And let's go ahead and create a collision 3D. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to set a bounds for when we want to activate the visibility properties. So we'll go ahead and select a shape. I'll do a cylinder and we'll make its height a little larger there. Guess we don't need to make it that tall. I'm going to set the radius to 10 meters. So if anything comes within 10 meters of this object, we'll be able to detect that with our callbacks. And I'm going to set the margin up to one meter because we don't need that real low level of granularity for the collision detection for this. And next, let's also create a synchronizer for this object. And we'll call it llama sync. And the root path is set to the base of this scene, so that's good. And I'm also going to want to create a script for this, so let's just go ahead and do that now. And then let's also create a script for the base object as well. Okay, so I want to start uh, tracking a couple properties. So the first thing let's do is create the properties that we want to track. And then in the process, we're going to have to calculate the motion. So when the activation area is triggered, we want to move that uh, object towards the player. So let's just see how to do that here.
So what we've done here is I'm going to use this target player position object to or field to synchronize the actual player, this llama object's position. And I pulled it out into its own property so that we can synchronize it easier. I'm not certain if that's the best way, but it seems to work great for me. Uh, so then we'll take the current position of this area object and we're just gonna move it slowly into the direction of the target player. So that's all we're doing with this. So this is gonna be a way to test uh, how we're synchronizing the properties and when they're turned off or not. So this is just saying if it's the target player that it's tracking, so not the authority and not the player that spawned the, the animal, the uh, sidekick object, it's just gonna print out the position of, of the actual object as it approaches the other player. So that position should shut off or remain stagnant once we turn off the visibility of that synchronization property. And I also want to know which peer had spawned the uh, sidekick object. So we've got our sidekick object set or our llama object set here. And let's go over to the synchronizer object. And we want to make sure that this is set. Okay, so the synchronizer script is set. So we don't need these for this synchronizer, but we're going to drag over the base object so we have access to that. And what we want to do is create a on area entered and exited where we're going to toggle the visibility of this object. And before I forget, let's wire up these on area exited and entered signals. So we'll go under the root node there and we're going to use body entered. Okay, so we connected the enter callback signal to this function, and then we're going to create a connection between the on area exited and the body exited signal there. Whoops. Great. So the first thing we'll do is exclude any peers that shouldn't be coming into this on entered. So we're basically going to exclude anything that isn't a peer or isn't an authority. So if the object that collides with this character or this object isn't a player, we want to ignore it. So I'm checking to make sure it is a player. So what this is going to say is when another player collides, uh, with this object, it will set the visibility to true, meaning that if it's the player that placed the object or if it's another player in the game, he's going to be able to see it once he becomes into the uh, area that gets hit by this on area entered method or, or signal. So remember, body.player is actually the peer ID of that client. So what I'm saying here is because we set which peer spawned it, I don't want to have the llama chase after the player that spawned it, even though that might be funny. Uh, it's only going to chase after peers that haven't spawned it. So that's all that check is doing here. So we're just setting the target player back in the llama script, this target player. We're going to just set that to the body that was collided there. And so we do that because we want to make sure that we're targeting the correct player so we know who to chase after. Oh, and the reason we're seeing this error right now is because I haven't created the class name for the player object script. So if I go back over here and we'll just say class name player extends character body, that should fix that issue. Oh, and I'm naming it bear trap because I use that in my old example. So let's just create it. Uh, let's just update it to the correct name. There we go. Great, so now when the player enters into the area, it will set the visibility to start syncing its location so we can actually see that object move towards the player and we'll actually see it appear. And we'll also set that target here so that it knows which player to chase. So when it exits though, we need to make sure that we undo that visibility. So we set the visibility to false so that it no longer synchronizes that uh, multiplayer synchronization property so it disappears and also stops synchronizing those properties. 
So we're gonna do the same exclusion checks where we don't wanna act on anything that's not on the, our active tree or is not a multiplayer peer or not an authority. So let's just copy this check and add it down here. So this is gonna be our server acting on these and performing these calculations. So that's how we just set the visibility for our synchronizer, which again is this llama synchronizer over here. And we're not, we don't have any properties synchronizing yet, but once we do have properties, it's basically going to toggle the visibility of these properties being synced between the clients, or actually just this specific client that we've toggled the visibility for. So what we're doing here is we're ensuring that once it has left, once we turn off the visibility, I'm also gonna set the target player to null so it stops chasing after the player. You may not want that. Maybe you want the object to continue to chase after the player and it can do that. And I'll show you how what that would look like. And But for this example, let's just start it out by once he gets out of his visibility, we just stop chasing him. And as you can see, that will be right here. So if that check is null, it will no longer sync the position towards that player. Okay, great. So I think we've got our on area entered and exited set up to toggle the visibility for that specific peer that came into that area. And we'll turn it on here and we'll sync the properties that we'll list down here. And then we'll turn those property syncs off here and once he leaves that area. So let's add our properties really quick. So we have our four properties that we're gonna sync, which is our who spawned it, the target player, and also the target position of that player, and then the underlying position of the llama. All right, so we've got our llama object, we've got the synchronizer set up. What else do we need to set? So one thing that's really important is in this case where you don't want to automatically synchronize the property, so you wanna turn off that visibility so that it's not just synchronizing the second it joins your map. So for example, if we were to spawn this object and you left this public visibility on, it would by default synchronize the properties down here in our synchronizer list. So in order to turn that off, we just uncheck that so that when the object spawns into the scene, it's not gonna be synchronizing. The only person or the only peer that knows about it in that case is the server, the server authority. So in order to synchronize its properties, you have to actually turn it on using the set visibility. So because we want both the person or the client that spawned the object and any opponents in the game to have visibility, I'm gonna set up the spawn to spawn right on top of the player. And because of that, he's within his area. So he'll automatically get that visibility set for true. So that in another player, when another player comes into that area, he will also be synchronized to that. And that's why you wanna turn this public visibility off when there's something that you don't wanna just automatically sync to all the clients. Okay, so we need to figure out where to spawn this llama object. So I can probably delete this. And let's go over into our player input script. And I'm gonna create another keyboard action input uh, for the Q key. So let's just add that really quick. We'll call it Q action. And then we're gonna create an RPC called execute action. So down under here, let's do an RPC, call local. Call local just enables uh, the server client uh, in a host mode for the client to be able to call locally to it. And then we'll call it execute action. And I'm just making sure with this that no other peers are getting in here and accidentally executing this logic somehow, it's just like a fail safe. Okay, so we've got our llama scene and let's instantiate that and we'll set its initial position to wherever the player is. I think I have the player object in here. No, I don't have him in there. So let's add the player object. Okay, great. So now we have the player position 
and we're going to set the initial scene location of this llama to the same position as the player and we're going to give it the name of the peer that actually executed this rpc and let's see how to do that so with git remote center id we know the peer or client that actually triggered this rpc call and i'm going to set the scene name to that so if you look here the spawn by name uh, we use that spawn by to make sure that we're not chasing after the player that spawned it. So that's why we have to set the name to the peer's uh, unique ID. So I also have to create this items placeholder in the level uh, scene. So let's just do that in a second. Okay, so this is gonna add the scene underneath our level world items placeholder. So let's pull up the level world and see, we don't have an items placeholder here, so let's add one. Okay, so now the uh, llama scene will be loaded underneath this items. And we also need to make sure that we are listening to spawn this item across the other clients. And the way we do that is we'll come over here and we're gonna add another multiplayer spawner that will listen for that llama to be spawned. So we're gonna assign it to the items path and we're gonna auto spawn when it detects the llama scene. So when we add the llama scene with this add child call, this spawner will detect it and it will automatically spawn it within this items placeholder. Okay, so our queue action will create a call to this execute action, which will spawn a sidekick, in this case, a llama which is a llama scene, and we'll add it to the child of this items object, which will automatically get spawned and synced across the other clients, uh, which is from our levels uh, multiplayer spawner here. Let's just call this item spawner. And as you can see here, it'll be auto spawned across the other clients because we're watching for it to get spawned or added there. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Let's make sure I have a couple instances and also I wanted to double check. Um, I added this flag. If you've been paying attention and following from the last few videos, I had to like add this flag so that it was really easy to turn off whether or not I wanted a host mode. So I don't actually want host mode. I want to run the server independently from the clients. So that's what this is going to do. So this will be our host and it, it won't show anything. And then we'll have our client number one. And let's just run him away for a little bit. Just get him out here in the middle. Okay, and then we'll start our other client. Okay, great. We'll just run him up on this hill. And you can see here there down there's the other player. So if I just pause there for a second and I'll go ahead and hit Q <laughs> and there's our giant llama. Okay, so if you watch down in the oh, I'm getting an error. Let's check on that error before we get any get any further along. Initialize, okay, is true. Okay, well, I'm gonna come back to that. That doesn't look like it's a major issue. I'm sure I just have a little oversight somewhere. Um, so if you look, you can see it's been spawned uh, by this client, which is assigned to this ID right now. And let's pull these back up. Okay, so as I get closer, keep an eye on those logs down there. You'll see that the llama should show up. So, so now that I got into its area, it's gonna chase me. But because I left its area, it disappeared, so it's no longer visible. So that, that's really it. But if you look at the other screen, the llama should still be visible, but it's not. So there's definitely a problem with that. So the llama shouldn't just go away uh, on both uh, screens. It should only be visible. It should still be visible on the player that spawned it, and it's not. So let's have a look at what's causing that. So our llama sync will come in here and it sets the visibility, which is good. And if the spawn player is not equal, spawn by is not equal to that, we set the target player to that. And this looks good to me. Okay, so let's just try it one more time just to double check that nothing else broke. So right now this client won't see it because I'm outside of the visibility area. So I'm not receiving any data for it. You can see in the logs, there's nothing being synchronized. But once I get close enough within that 10 meter range, it's gonna trigger that on area entered Okay, and then it's gonna start moving towards me. So you can see it's moving at me at a fairly low speed and I'm synchronizing all those positions. But as soon as I get with outside of that range, it goes away. 
but it shouldn't be going away for the other player. So again, okay, so we verified that that is an issue. Let me just double check on what's going on. I'm gonna up this to 20. I think the llama is actually working correctly uh, because I just think it's running too far away from the player, the player that spawned it, that is. So we connect down there. Let's run over here. Spawn the llama. And if I walk away, okay, so it does disappear and it should reappear, okay. So I think it was working correctly. I think I was just thinking that it was a bug. So if I spawn the other client, and let's see, I can't see the llama right now because I'm outside of that radius, but the second I get into it, it's gonna start chasing after me. And because it got out of range of the other player, it disappears from that other player. But if I move back over here to get near him, it disappears from me because I got out of range. But if I get close again, it's gonna start chasing me. And if I, <laughs> I guess I should extend the radius a little bit more. I think it's also a height thing. I think because it's higher than me, the I need to set that radius limit to be a little lower. But if I bring it back, let's bring it back towards the other player who spawned it. And you should see it just come across it on the other screen. Yeah, so it's working fine. So right now, both players can see it. If I get out of range, if I move it out of range, I won't be able to see it and it'll actually stop chasing me. But if we go back to the other client and I get within range of it, then I'll be able to safely see it. Yeah, I definitely think I have a height issue because it's so large um, or it's a higher up. I'll need to adjust the height so that it detects that on a uh, body entered better. Uh, but that's pretty much the gist of it. And I wanna add another test here. Uh, let's go back into our code. Let's kill that example. I'm gonna actually set the height a little higher. And I'm gonna lower it. So that if it's above one of our players, it still detects it. Okay. So let's go back over into our script and I wanna do something so that it continues to chase us even though it's not visible anymore. So how do we do that? So let's go under the visibility thing. I'm not gonna do this target player to null check. Let's keep let's keep the target still chasing the player even though the visibility goes away. So what that will do is it will allow us to still process on the server that that llama wants to chase after the other player and you'll see the uh, local results still printing out here because it's still being updated. Um, actually, that's not true because um, you won't see the uh, positions being printed out here because we set our visibility of false, but behind the scenes, it's still chasing us. So it'll all of a sudden reappear again and resync with us. So that's like an example. If you have like a world boss who's wandering around and he gets too close to your player, he'll start synchronizing uh, its position and whatever data with the player that's local to him. So let's just see what that looks like. Turn on host mode. Cat client. Run away. Okay, so let's spawn him out here in the middle of nowhere. Great, okay, so that, that looks about right, that distance. And let's go to the other client. And so I don't see the llama yet, and then I get close enough, and then he's chasing towards me. So let's run away. So he's disappeared, and you can see down at the bottom there, I'm not getting any data, but he's still moving. You can see it on the other screen. Let's try it, let's do this again. I wanna make sure that everybody saw that because I definitely missed it. Okay, he's still chasing me because we didn't set the target to null, and you can see him showing up on the other client, and if I move away, it's not on me, but he's still on the other client because his visibility is still set. Wish I could show him looking at it. So if I get close enough, he'll reappear and you can see it's getting really close to the target object. And then it'll just sit there because I didn't have it do anything. But if I run away again, it disappears for me, but it's still showing on his screen and you can just watch it move away. And then it appears on the other client. So there you have it. That is a really good example of how to use the visibility tools to turn off the synchronization of properties but you can also tweak it a little bit to whatever your game's requirements are. Like in this case, I still wanted the bad guy or the uh, sidekick to chase after the other opponent, even though it wasn't in his visible range. So 
You can play around with this and make it fit for whatever game requirements that you're trying to achieve. But let me know in the comments what you think or maybe if you can think of another use case for this. And uh, if you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like and subscribe because I got some great multiplayer videos on the way. Thanks for watching.